Good afternoon, everybody, and how are you uh, on a lovely day? I'd just like to ask you to say a prayer for a wonderful man of this parish, Mr. Michael Fitzsimons, who has literally just died before I came in here. He was a watchmaker in his time, and an Irishman living in Sackett, Mrs. Claire Quinn and Mrs. Angela Baxter's dad, and um, a wonderful chap, very brave, his wife, Mary, has developed dementia some time ago, so he was trying to keep alive for her, which has been very, very difficult. But please pray for his family today. Um, and I would normally have seen him this afternoon, but I'll go straight after I've recorded this or after Mass. So please remember them, if you would. Um, listening to these talks for the past year or so, as you've kindly been doing, you surely have worked out by, for yourselves by now that I'm really a rather boring and predictable person. Uh, don't worry. It takes years of practice, as I constantly tell people when they comment about it. And this is especially the case in my personal life, which um, previously was confined to three little breaks during the year with my family in Ireland, or my brother and sister-in-law, and one or two friends, and then my summer holiday, which has been the same for years and years, namely driving down to Lourdes to work in the baths with the most amazing Italian and Spanish people who I truly love and miss, and will miss them again this year, um, and thereafter going to the banks of Lago Maggiore in Italy, in the south of, Italy, south of the lake, a place called Baveno, which is near to Stresa, where, of course, that terrible accident happened um, only a few days ago with the cable car crashing and 14 people dying. That's just down the road from where I've been. I've actually been to Baveno for 30 years off and on. And so I spoke to the campsite owners. As it happened, they were ringing up to see if I was coming this year, which of course I can't. And I say to them how sorry we felt for them and for all the local people. Um, so why am I talking like this? Um, <clears throat> when I'm go to this place in, in uh, Campeggio Parisi, which I have done with my trailer tent, uh, you tend to meet the same people and you become friends and I've made friends with a number of Dutch people and some English people, and particularly a Welsh family called the Reeds. Um, Lynn and Marge and their son Steve and his wife Jane and the two boys, Will and Sam. And over the years, we've been very, very good friends on the campsite, helping each other, eating together, to the point that when Lynn died two or three years ago, uh, I went down to Cardiff to do his funeral. He didn't know any priests or ministers, and I said to Marge, I said, look, you know, you can't have a nobody doing this. So I was very happy to go and celebrate um, the funeral of my friend. And the reason I'm telling you all this is, in the summer of 2010, I arrived there, weary from my long drive from Leward, and they kindly, as they always did, had a beer for me, helped me put my tent up, fed me and royally and so on. And about 10 o'clock at night, before I was on my way to bed, Jane, that is Steve's wife, said, I wonder if I could ask you a favour. Now, she had been a, an art director in an advertising firm, but got a bit fed up of it, and took on being a primary school teacher and was exceedingly keen. And she said to me, um, well, you sort of write things, don't you? And I said, well, yeah, a bit, you know. And she said, I wonder, would you mind helping me with my Christmas production? And I said, Jane, it's the 8th of August. Why, just have your holiday, don't be worrying about that. She said, oh no. She said, I thought about doing the Christmas story to Mamma Mia. I said, I beg your pardon. Yeah, Mamma Mary, you know, and I thought, oh, God, that sounds terrible. Anyway, unfortunately for me, somebody on that side had got one of those, what they used to call in those days, an MP3 player. So I spent 10 days sitting under a tree trying to write holy words to Mother Mary. And to be fair, I actually got into it. I actually got into it. And uh, I did a few things, and I thought, this is never going to come to anything, and you know, got home and... I happened to mention it to Karen Burton, you know, and uh, I said, Karen, I nearly ended up writing holy words to, to Mamma Mia. Oh, God, she said, that'd be great. You've got to do it. So uh, I tried to do it, and, but in the end, I did manage to do it. But it wasn't just me, of course. Um, 
I enlisted the services of my dear friend Mark, who would be standing behind this um, camera, um, and whom I shall greatly embarrass by calling him a genius when it comes to this sort of thing, which he certainly is. And he found some very tasteful backing music to Mamma Mia, not your sort of karaoke rubbish that people sing in the pub, but um, some really good music. And so I set to work on my days off trying to get all this together. Um, and as so often happens, as we've said before, things come together by accident, which is exactly what happened. I managed to write the words to 18 songs, found a remarkable Irish singer from our old Shulton parish, Maria O'Connell, a young lady from Leicester called Lauren Glasgow, with the most beautiful voice to play the lead, and my friends Sid and Jane Henderson with her daughter Georgina, who knew an awful lot about creating an auto cue so that the choir could read the words uh, without having books. And then I was completely gobsmacked when 60 odd people said they wanted to be in the choir in the dancers, including, of course, our very own Sunshine Club from Span, which is why I am telling you about this because it's essentially part of Span's work. And this is how Mother Mary, as it was called, came into being. And it was the most tremendous and unbelievable success. They don't do excitement in Hinckley, I often heard, which is true. Uh, but on the first night of this production <coughs> in our beautiful church here, um, they went mad with sheer joy and delight. It was, a, it was a wonderful experience, and particularly as Jane and her husband Steve had come specially from Wales to see what her casual campsite, Italian campsite idea would turn out like. And I'll never forget, uh, I was conducting people, turning around and seeing her face, and her jaw dropped in sheer amazement. So the um, Michael Flattery of the Dance of the Light morphed into the Simon Rattled of Mother Mary. And many of you have seen this, of course, on the five occasions we've presented it since, making over £13,000 for charity in the process and going on tour to several other parishes in the diocese, which everyone loved. Mother Mary is fun, but so much more. It is a serious piece of pure evangelization telling us what's happened to the story of Christmas and how by returning to the very beginning we could possibly recapture some of the real meaning and joy of this great feast once again, having divested ourselves of all the trappings and huge expense that it has now become and by looking at this humble servant of the Lord, Mary, and by imitating her example. The finale of the production set which became a version of her beautiful prayer, the Magnificat, My Soul Glorifies the Lord, was set to the tune of Dancing Queen and brought every single audience jumping to their feet in sheer delight. And isn't this precisely what Christmas is supposed to be? Um, our stand group presented some of it during a liturgy at Mount St Bernard Abbey in May 2014 and were shocked to discover that Father Joseph and the contemplative monks had actually heard of Abba. And so in thanksgiving for our emergence from the pandemic, we hope to be able to present it again in the winter of 2022. And once again then, Span became involved in a major musical production and we were to do so yet again within the next six years at the instigation this time of Bishop Patrick, but I will leave that till next week. In those years, many things happened, many joyful and others sad. We continued with our project work with such schemes as the story, the year of faith, saints in the making, messengers of joy, and the year of mercy, followed by the legacy of the year of mercy. All these projects were engaging and inspiring, as I will demonstrate to you in a week or two. Father Simon Giles, our Loughborough Group chaplain, would celebrate first 50 years as a Rosminian and then 40 years as a priest, followed a few years after by myself and Father Peter Coyle, celebrating our Ruby Jubilees here together. Father John Sherrington was consecrated as Auxiliary Bishop of Westminster in 2011, and we miss him. He came to our annual mass that year and was presented with a special gift of a white mitre by Spand. And he also joined Father Peter and I some time later for our Jubilee Mass, at the end of which he turned to me and he said, I'm glad I'm not your bishop. 
That year, 2006, also marked, sorry, 2005, also marked the 40th anniversary of Faith and Light. And the Mass in Hinckley that year was called Let Our Faith Bring You Light, the highlight of which was the presentation to Anne Emmett, the National Director of Faith and Light, of a beautiful, specially made anniversary banner by the late Mary Tovey of our parish. Our beloved Bishop Malcolm was appointed Archbishop of Liverpool in 2014, and we were all very sad. He had been a cheerful and enthusiastic member of SPAND and saved his very last words as our bishop for us, which was a beautiful compliment. He was to be succeeded by Bishop Patrick McKinney from Birmingham, who incidentally, all those years ago, as a fellow student of mine, was one of the group on that minibus making our, Lourdes for, our way to Leward for Easter week. He was warmly welcome and likewise presented with a white mitre on the occasion of his first annual mass with us in 2015. We also marked the London Olympics and were thrilled when Jack Marshall from Scunthorpe, a young man who had gained much notoriety from his fundraising activities, was chosen to be one of the actual torch bearers. Each bearer was given the opportunity to buy the torch that they'd carried and so he brought his to our annual mass that year. Since then, he's become something of a celebrity in the local press and even on television, winning several awards locally and nationally for his dogged commitment and generosity and mixing with celebrities like Mo Farmer, Farrah, uh, a real advert for Spand, if ever there was one. There would be sadness with the movement of so many of our priests to other parishes, to deaths of beloved members, group members and friends, and also that of Sister Madeleine Campion, our first assistant director in 2013. In the year of our 40th anniversary, the saddest episode of this period took place when our Luff beloved Loughborough group decided <coughs> that they could no longer continue for many reasons. And I'd just like to read to you now the words I spoke at their last group mass in St Mary's Church in July 2016. As part of the spanned 40th anniversary celebrations this year, we've been trying to think of the distinctive features of each of our groups, and it is only right that we should reflect on the uniqueness of our Loughborough group, particularly as we now have arrived at what will be a very sad day. The first thing to think about is our group leader, Tony Wilkinson, who has given 38 years of his life and energy to our group and found in his wife, Sharon, a person who shared his vision and commitment. Theirs has been a marriage entirely based on giving, and in so doing, they found great friends like Mary and Paul, Karen, Bernie, Rory, Father Simon, Sister Lucina, and of course, the late Sister Mary David and they brought up their two sons, Matthew and Liam, to do this work with them. The HCPT and Faith and Light organisations would have equal need to be grateful to them for this. Their contribution to the life of the church and wider community in Loughborough, to the diocese and to Spand, can never be adequately expressed. Secondly, we think about the manner in which the work of the Loughborough group began visiting families who had children with long-term disabling conditions and who often felt a bit abandoned by the church, but never by Sister Mary David, who was simply the representation of the Catholic Church in this town for so many years. This sensitive work, building trust and friendships, especially with the Italian families, has been the hallmark of the ministry of the Loughborough Group, and on so many occasions, this has meant that families could be gently supported in the most difficult, tragic, and trying circumstances. Most surely, the love of our Lord was showing itself here. Then there was the participation of the group in HCPT pilgrimages and its involvement with the Faith and Light movement. For many years, Group 124 went to Leward at Easter week and noticing a significant gap in the work of the Pilgrimage Trust, this group, the Loughborough Group, was the first to take parents along with their children and also to take people with learning difficulties, which practice has now become a regular feature of those pilgrimages. Furthermore, the Loughborough Group has been a very sociable group of friends, with many barbecues, parties, celebrations, weekends away and holidays, as well as pilgrimages and faith and light celebrations. 
This togetherness has expressed itself most fully in the periodic masses for the group itself or along with other span groups. Of course, through the years, the group has been immensely supported by members of the Institute of Charity, the Rosminian Order, be it the priests at St. Mary's, Grace Jew or Ratcliffe College, or the wonderful sisters at the convent. None of our work could ever have been carried out without them, and we owe them a great and unpayable debt. Finally, from the beginning, the group has worked working under the umbrella of what we now call SPAND, sharing its charitable status and taking an active part in its missionary work and benefiting considerably from its financial support. In looking to the future, it is our hope that the wonderful friendships created by the Loughborough Group can continue through St Mary's Parish and that individual members will continue to support SPAND and come to its various celebrations to meet up with the friends they have made. May our memories cheer and comfort us and all that we have achieved in the Lord's service continue to inspire us from this day forward. Thank you so much to everyone who's played any part in the history and ministry of the Loughborough Group, especially if that's been done quietly. The Father in heaven will surely reward you. We miss our Loughborough friends so much, but know that not all of their work has finished, with several group members included imperceptibly in the life and work of their parishes, which is, of course, just as it should be. Halfway through that decade and around about the time of Bishop Patrick's appointment, we noticed the widespread development of a condition which had always been present but not to such an extent, dementia. It was only right that people living with dementia should be counted as those with additional needs, as our title claims, and thus somehow be included in our work. And so we offered to take it on in the diocese and got down to reflecting on how we could support those living with it and their carers. That initial work would result in the publication of a book and courses run in different parts of the diocese, as you will hear. Shortly after Bishop Patrick joined us for his first annual mass, he wrote me a letter asking the first of what would be a number of favors. I had made the mistake of writing to him on his appointment to congratulate and welcome him, but also to tell him that he'd been my friend for over 40 years and now I would have to learn to obey him as well. So he took me upon it. And having discovered Mother Mary, asked if I could write something for the forthcoming year of mercy, which Pope Francis had designated. There was no way I thought I could ever do anything like that because mercy is a concept whereas the Christmas story of Mother Mary was an event and a story in itself. I'd given up the thought of doing, doing this and felt a bit guilty that I was not able to respond to my bishop's request until one evening at supper with my friends Tim and Ali Broom and Father John St. John, I suddenly went silent. Tim noticed it and asked if anything was wrong. I told him that three words had just come into my mind that I was surely going to live to regret. Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> 